Hello, welcome back to my workbench up here in the study at Dongit's Model Railway. I'm reviewing a different DCC decoder today to see if it is suitable for use on my layout. I'm looking at alternatives to the standard Zimo MX638D that I've previously used as I'm unable to get any. They have been out of stock since the beginning of the year. This is a DCC Concepts Zen Black decoder. The version I have here is the 21 pin ZN218.6. This is not a sponsored video. I bought this retail with my own money. I picked this decoder as I depend on constant distance AVC braking on this layout and the DCC Concepts Zen Black range was recommended to me as having an excellent ABC implementation. I'm going to use this Hellion Class 25 as my test loco. It has been waiting its turn for DCC fitting for about 8 months now and as a brand new loco with only a DC test run under its belt it should be a good test case. Decoder fitted, body shell back on and onto the programming track for initial setup. And that's the first indication something here is seriously wrong. JMRI has absolutely no idea what this decoder is. That's a massive surprise, as the Zen Black isn't a freshly released product. I found this review dated April 2019, which is three and a bit years ago at the time of recording. That's very concerning. For a regularly updated, widely used piece of software like JMRI to not even have a definition for the decoder is a giant red flag. Picking the similar sounding Z218 did let me set basic CVs like an address, but it didn't give me any settings for ABC braking at all. I'm not sure exactly what a Z218 is in DCC Concepts range, but the last time the decoder file for this was updated was about 6 years ago, so it's definitely not this decoder. To take this further, I will need to create a decoder configuration file for JMRI. That requires in-depth knowledge about everything the chip can do, and a lot of work to create the files. The manual for the Zen Black is quite thorough. It strikes a good balance between a good reference manual to tell you what each setting is for and what it's going to do, and having good worked examples to show how to achieve specific ends. There's a couple of places where the reference side could be better, but overall it's a well thought out manual. However, it is also concerning that in the manual there is no mention of constant distance anywhere, and in the section to do with ABC braking behaviour, it never mentions distance at all. The only part of the entire manual that isn't really about shuttle train operation is this part here, and the usage of the words deceleration and rate instead of distance is very worrying. Before diving into this, I checked beforehand on the DCC Concepts forum if it can in fact do constant distance ABC braking, and received a solid confirmation from someone who works there that it can, although he wrote me an essay and picked at wording everywhere, and someone else chimed in and said that it couldn't. That person recommended Trainomatic Locomander decoders instead. He said they weren't as good at ABC as Zimo, but they were available. Let's take a minute out at this point to look in detail at just what constant distance ABC braking actually is, so we can understand what he means by not as good in this circumstance. Consider this graph. The horizontal axis will be the distance from the trigger point where the block switches to ABC on the left, to the target stop point on the right. The vertical axis is speed. One good option is to adjust the speed smoothly over the distance, so the train will appear to give the smoothest stop possible. This would be the preferred option if you always ran your loco at the maximum permitted speed for the type of train. So a train entering at half speed would represent a freight that would still need to slow down at the earliest opportunity, because that would be the maximum speed allowed for that freight train. A second good option is to fix the deceleration rate to delay braking until the train travels that far into the section that it can slow down at the same rate. This is more appropriate if your train may not have accelerated to maximum speed when it starts braking, so the driver would coast for a bit and then apply the brakes later. There's also a third option. Start decelerating at your pre-programmed rate at the moment you hit the trigger point, and then creep forward until you get to your stop. It works, but it doesn't look very realistic, and it tends to be less reliable because there's no momentum during the creep phase and if you happen to encounter a piece of dirt big enough to break contact, the loco can easily disconnect itself from the track. This third pattern is what the Locomander decoders I bought previously were doing, and is why they are now all in vehicles that don't have motors. Perhaps they've changed this behaviour now, but I think this behaviour is what he's referring to when he says, not as good. Anyway, the thread continued for some time, and honestly all I got from it was more confused about what this decoder can and can't do, and a headache. Making a decoder configuration for JMRI took me all of Saturday. 
After many off-camera attempts to make it stop at all, plus a full pass of cleaning wheels and track, I'd finally arrived at a setting of CV58 equals 3, and it stopped in section for the first time. That was at 2am on Sunday morning though, and I'd long given up pointing the camera at it at that point. It's now Sunday afternoon, and I am here testing the decoder's behaviour. At about 75% throttle, the loco triggers the ABC and stops in a nice position. I'll mark the stop point with something lying around nearby. At a value of just 3, I've got very little adjustment here, so let's see how consistent it is before I look again at tuning this value. It might get better with a remap of top and mid speeds to be more linear, but I need to verify it's even trying before I put that effort in. I'll run it in at 50% throttle this time. And that's a completely different stopping place. The lights are still on, so that's not a failure. It hasn't died and stopped. It genuinely intended to stop there. It's about one third the stopping distance for approximately two thirds the entry speed. That's not even linear. It's worse than that. It's not looking promising so far. Let's try again at about 30% throttle. If I'm right, and the correct answer to the question, can it do constant distance ABC was no, then it'll be even further back in the block. And sure enough, that just smashed the emergency on and stopped as fast as it could. To complete the picture, let's do a pass at 100% speed too. It does make a feeble attempt at stopping, but it's still carrying plenty of speed when it overshoots the braking area and runs off down the far end of the layout. It'll overshoot that braking area too. Let's go back to our graph. This is what it's doing. This is actually a pretty good approximation of constant brake force. This is what you would see if you looked at, say, a deceleration test of a real vehicle under maximum brake force. If it is implementing this, that would definitely explain why it's so sensitive to variations in initial speed, particularly at the upper end of the speed range. Honestly though, that's not what ABC braking is supposed to represent. It's supposed to represent the behaviour of a driver who has just seen a yellow signal and is approaching a red and wants to stop at it. It's definitely objectively worse than the trainomatic decoders I have already cascaded out of use. There's just no constant distance logic in this decoder whatsoever. The simple answer in post 2 of that forum thread should have been no. And if the employee really wanted to sell his product, then a no but we do something else which can achieve similar results if you rewire your layout in the following way would have been a reasonable response. The fact he didn't say that, and he wasted two days of my life to this point, frankly that's very annoying. I spotted some other weasel words in the manual that have me concerned. Let's see what happens with the loco the other way round. We're coming into the section here at 33% speed, so we should be able to stop easily. No reaction whatsoever, not even the slightest attempt to slow down. This isn't even constant distance, it's literally just detecting ABC wrong. Every other brand can handle the loco being number two end forwards on the track and being driven into the same ABC section that works with the number one end forwards. Strangely, when running the other way through this section, we've triggered a slow speed response, which I wasn't expecting. I'm going to have to try this again, because I almost don't believe I've just seen that. Come on now, DCC Concepts. This is really basic stuff you're getting wrong.
This layout is fundamentally a terminus to fiddle yard plan, and the fiddle yard forms a reversing loop. Locos will flip from number 1 end leading to number 2 end leading every time they go to the terminus station and come back out. If your decoders can't handle that, that's an embarrassingly poor show. I won't be keeping this decoder in service. The ABC implementation is not suitable for use on my layout. If you have a layout which uses constant distance ABC breaking, you cannot use DCC Concepts Zen Black decoders. If you are planning a layout which will use ABC braking for anything other than a dedicated shuttle train, I would also highly recommend that you do not use DCC Concepts products, as the non-standard way that they use ABC will lock you into only their equipment throughout. What's more concerning here is the communication by company employees via their forum. Telling a customer that the product can do what they ask when it can't is flat out unacceptable. And it's not like this guy wasn't aware. He had some involvement with at least specifying what the decoder should do, and he wrote the manual. The fact that he couldn't bring himself to give a clear no in two pages of forum thread, and managed to get angry enough with the customer to lock the thread, is an even more giant red flag. As a result of the actions of this staff member, I must recommend avoiding anything that DCC concepts make that involves both electronics and an interface standard. My experience with this staff member has called into question the ability of DCC Concepts to answer honestly whether or not any of their products implements an expected standard feature. This is a huge shame as they make what look on the website to be a range of quite useful products, but once bitten twice shy. Right, I'm off to order another decoder from someone else, and I'll be back with a review of that one when it arrives. See you next time up here in the study at Dongit's Model Railway.